Good afternoon, Internet. This is Clone here again with some awesome news. Transformers TCG Zero Hour Heat 2 is almost complete, and we are going to start the spoiler seasons today. We are. I am so, so, so excited to bring you all this awesome goodies. First up, I'm going to clarify what exactly is the plans for Zero Hour Heat 2. We always pick a theme with our sets, and I always leave a little hint in our previous sets about what the next set's, like, gimmick is. So if you can figure out what the hint was in Heat, two, in heat 1, that was hinting towards Heat 2. I'll give you a little round of applause. And maybe a cookie. <laughs> uh, but our goal with this one is the idea of completing a character and pushing the game into a more archetype-focused, character-driven game. Because when you think of Transformers, you're not thinking of Grenade Launcher or Belligerence. No, you're thinking of Optimus and Grimlock, Megatron. So through the future of Zero Hour, uh, that's going to be our primary focus is complete making a character like have his own like story within a deck. That each character is very special to Transformers and every card needs to be special. I think this is a beautiful way to push the game forward with character specific like abilities that are a bit stronger than the generic abilities, but still bit stronger, a bit stronger than the generic cards, but still not quite like ungodly overpowered. At least we hope not. Um, so we're gonna start off this spoiler by just showing off some what some examples of what I mean, and we're gonna some cleanups and the idea of completing a character from Heat One because some characters were so close to being perfect, and these cards are gonna help. So as you can see, we got one of my favorite Transformers of all time, Bludgeon. I'm giving him a new action. It'll be the only Bludgeon support in the set, because he's got enough now. I feel comp accomplished with all this stuff. New Cruelty. New Cruelty. Orange Black, which is all, all Bludgeon needs. You see Orange Black, Bludgeon likes it. If you have Bludgeon on the battlefield in bot mode, his best mode, do one damage to two different enemies. And then Bludgeon gets bold one until end of turn. So it's a slightly weaker organized mayhem, or slightly weaker strafing run, but it's got orange black and it gives Bludgeon Bold one. Bludgeon is gonna love this card, and I love this card too. Next, as you can see, we've got the Beam Saber of Blitzwing, which is what this big sword is called because he always has it. And it's a cool looking weapon and signature weapons. Mm, I love them. Ever since I saw Ion Blaster of Optimus Prime in in, wa in Wave 1 of the original card game, I fell in love with the, the idea of signature weapons, because every single character has one, and we're going to be making a lot more of them. The Beam Saber. Put on Blitzwing only. It's a more aggressive card, as you can see. He has plus one health and plus one attack. And when the upgraded character attacks, you flip one orange and one black, do one damage to the defender. It's very aggressive, and it'll get you those early turn, ones, turn two or turn one swings with Blitzwing, because he can hit pretty hard in the early game. And then I want to show off a stratagem, Octopunch, one of my favorite characters I designed in Heat 1. And what it does is, another big thing about Zero Hour is, um, excuse me, star manipulation. It is an awesome little gimmick to have, and I kind of exploit the hell out of star manipulation and moving stars around. So that's kind of what a lot of stratagems kind of gear a lot of yeah a lot of stratagems are going to gear towards that star manipulation so this you get a refund of the stratagem if you have a decepticon leader with at least 13 stars so basically octopunch is not he needs a leader to command him to get those big kills and it's the, the strategy is called deep six forgot to mention i um, mean so that's what it's a free strategy if you have a big decepticon leader namely shockwave <laughs> When your Octopunch and when your Octopunch attacks an enemy in alt mode, who has seven stars or fewer, he gets Pierce One until end of battle for each blue you flip. But the downside is you can only have blue star cards in your deck. So there's different colored star cards like orange, black, green. You can all, the all star. If you want to put a star card in your deck, it has to be blue. So that's what the and he's attacking characters in alt mode because he's sinking their ships. He's deep sixing them. It's a fun little strategy and just gives Octopunch a little bit more oomph. And it's a lot of fun. And the last few cards we want to take a look at today. My main man, Jaxus. Top top three, maybe even top two best Transformers of all time. Jaxus was borderline all perfect in Heat Heat 1. So Heat 2, we're going to make him even more perfecter. Is that a word? Whatever, it's a word now. 
The first one is he needed some kind of upgrade disruption. So duress, you bounce an enemy upgrade to its owner's hand. And then if your GX has at least six Doom counters, you scrap the upgrade instead. And of course, after the card resolves, you put one Doom counter on G-Axis. So he's just getting, which is his whole thing, scaling. Next we have two cards, the Iron cards, Iron Fist and Iron Will. Um, neither of these are specifically like G-Axis support, but they're intended for him. I've heard people talk about using them with Octane and, or Lockdown, which would be really fun. And if you have two, for Iron Fist, we'll start with that one. Blue, Black, which are G-Axis' favorite colors. Well, mostly black with a little bit of blue. And if your starting team has at least two mercenaries, draw two cards. It's a nice little draw. Draw effect for heavy mercenary teams, because full you only use like one mercenary. G-Axis was special in the fact he's using two. And there's and minor hint, there may be a third one coming in heat heat two. Stay on the lookout. And Iron Will, put on mercenaries only, tough one, and plus one defense. So it's a little bit better than smoke cloak and armor plating. Like you took those two cards and merged them together. But you can only put it on mercenaries, like G-Axis. And lastly, my favorite G-Axis support card to date, Warmonger. This is his late game, his win condition. And it's in the early game, if you have three Doom counters on G-Axis, you can flip one of your mercenaries to another mode, so that can help you keep flipping Rook and put the pressure on your opponent and get G-Axis up there. If you have at least six Doom counters, G-Axis gets plus two attack. Which is, and then... If you have at least 9 Doom counters, repair 2 damage. So if you have 9 or more Doom counters on G-Axis, he gets all 3 of those effects. So this is just a little little preview spoiler for Heat 2. Uh, Heat 2 is set to release in the middle of July, sometime after the 4th of July. And this was just a little teaser of what's to come. The spoiler, scene is, spoiler season has just begun, and I'm so excited to share them all with you. Thanks for watching, and until next time, roll out.